He also served as the Logistic Management Staff Officer for the Office of Defense Representative in Tehran, uh, in Tehran, Iran, just a few years before the Iranian hostage crisis. Today, he served as the Director of the Department of Defense Vietnam War 50th Anniversary Commemoration, which is fitting since he served in Vietnam as Assistant Chief of Staff for the 101st Airborne Division. Ladies and gentlemen, please extend a warm welcome to Lieutenant General Claude Elm Cakelighter. National Commander Wang, Wong, thank you very much for that very kind introduction. This morning, I'd like to brief you on the nation's program to thank and honor our Vietnam veterans and their families as we as a nation commemorate the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War. On this next slide, you'll see the commemorative flag. There's a lot of symbolism in this flag, and if you stop by our booth, uh, you picked up a a trifolder that tells you all about the flag, or if you'll go to our website, and I won't take the time to describe it all this morning, but I would say that uh, the most significant thing about this flag is the phrase at the bottom of the flag. It says, a grateful nation thanks and honors you, our Vietnam veteran and your family, for your service, valor, and sacrifice. We want to see this flag flying all across our nation as we go through this 13-year commemoration. Next slide. What we'll discuss this morning is the background of the program. We have a public law that tells us that we will do this, and that law gives us objectives to accomplish during this commemoration, and we've derived a mission statement from that, and this is a three phase program. Phase one is preparation, phase two is execution, and phase three is a sustainment. And I'll talk briefly about those three phases this morning. And then I'll close with a few comments and a few highlights from the opening ceremony of this commemoration on Memorial Day in Washington, D.C. at the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. In 2008, Congress passed a law authorizing the Secretary of Defense to conduct this nationwide program. In 2011, the Deputy Secretary of Defense assigned the mission to oversee this to the Director of Admin and Management inside the Secretary of Defense's office. And in 2012, as planned, we made the announcement to the nation about this program and working with the White House, we published a proclamation about the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War. The public law tasked the Department of Defense to recruit, coordinate, support, and facilitate commemorative events all across this great nation and also with our allies in their countries, as well as to schedule major events and to prioritize the effort to ensure that we achieve the objectives of that law, and I'll, I'll briefly discuss those five objectives. Objective one is to thank and honor the Vietnam veterans with special emphasis on personnel who were prisoners of war and those who were missing in action and those who never returned. Also, a, a very special emphasis is to make sure that we remember all the families, the Blue Star families and the Gold Star families, the unaccounted for families. Objective number two is to highlight the service of all the armed forces to make sure we don't leave any out. And also make sure we include the federal agencies that participated in this war, along with government and non-government organizations. And objective number three is to pay 
tribute to the home front. Objective number four is to highlight the advances in technology, science, and medicine that was re related to that war, and also to recognition the accomplishments and the sacrifices of our allies that fought along beside us in that war. The mission statement that is derived from that law is to assist, and, and this is all the nation, is to assist a grateful nation in thanking and honoring our Vietnam veterans and their families, the fallen, the wounded, and those who were held prisoners of war and those unaccounted for. We want to make sure that, that we touch all of our veterans, wherever they live, and we want to touch their families, and we want to make this commemoration hometown-centric. We want to go to where they live and properly thank them for their service 50 years ago. We will also assist this nation throughout this commemorative period to ensure that we get the fullest possible accounting for those still unaccounted for. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this was a long, tough war. And many in this audience, most in this audience, know that. The preparation phase of this program is phase one, and that's where we build, recruit, and organize. And that will run from 2011 to 2014, where we light up hometown America and go to, go to hometown America to thank and honor the veterans is phase two. That runs from 2015 to 2017. And then uh, we sustain this operation from 2018 to 2025. And I'll talk a little bit about, briefly about each of the phases and some of the things. Due to time, we'll only hit the highlights, but we have more information about this on our website or you can contact us and we'll be glad to supply more information. Again, phase one, we had planned to have an announcement and also with the White House published a presidential proclamation and we did that on Memorial Day. We're now in the process of recruiting and we would like to recruit all the posts from the Legion in all your hometowns to help us execute this program. We hope to have by the end of phase one more than 8,000 communities involved and by the end of phase two 10,000 communities, and by the end of this commemoration, somewhere over 15,000 communities involved. Uh, we, we will also, and this I think is a very important point, is that we will remember all of our veterans at all of our events from all of our wars. We will also especially remember those veterans who are coming off the battlefields today in Iraq in Afghanistan. And we want to demonstrate to them that what happened to the Vietnam veteran generation will not happen to them. But the main focus will be on the Vietnam veterans and their families. This is their 50th anniversary. And this is a chance to turn the pages of history back to right or wrong. And our intention is to do just that. We've established an interagency advisory group that meets frequently. And it integrates all the effort within the, the Department of Defense and all the federal agencies. And we're also going to expand that by bringing Vietnam veterans into that group. And we'll call it an advisory commitment in the next few weeks. Next slide, please. We will be building strong partnerships, which is abs absolutely essential with veteran service organizations. And the American Legion is one of the very first and have been very strong supporters of this program. And we're extremely grateful about that because that's who you are and that's what you do. And I've known that since I was a teenager. We're also planning to mint some commemorative coins to help raise money to invest in this program. We're requesting the Postal Service to issue commemorative stamps uh, uh, that will be very historical about the war. 
we'll have an exhibit uh, in the Pentagon uh, that will be uh, something like a museum. It will be 300 feet long and 20 feet wide. We're also producing uh, exhibits that can be shipped across the country and to uh, events like this, our hometown events, so we can assist in commemorating in hometown America. We're also working very hard to make sure we don't leave the Vietnamese Americans out of all of our events. We want them to be part of this. And we will certainly include our allies. On this next slide, you see that uh, the Department of Defense is very united behind this mission, from the Secretary and the Chairman on down. The Joint Chiefs of Staff, the Military Services, the Guard, the Reserve, and our supporting commands that have missions to help support this. The Pacific Command will be supporting events in Hawaii and throughout the Pacific where our allies are. Northern Command will be supporting events in the continental U.S. and Alaska. And the Joint Forces Headquarters in Washington, D.C. will be supporting events in the Washington, D.C. area. And our service bands, which are premier bands, and bands around the country will be preparing to put on Bob Hope type shows and travel across the country as needed. I would also mention that history and education, getting it right, is a very important part of this commemoration. We're going to develop educational materials for grades 7 through 12 and through co in colleges and universities, and we'll be working with ROTC departments as well. And, and uh, we know that there's a lot of educational programs already going on. You have a lot in this great organization. And we don't plan to replicate, but we plan to build on what you've already done. But we'll have lesson plans. We'll have lecture series of distinguished veterans on DVDs. Uh, we'll have uh, public, uh, private, and primary source documents. We'll have lots of publications that will be available to schools. We'll be producing and reissuing documentary films, and we'll have a lot of posters. And as we come to the end of phase one in 2014, on Veterans Day, we will start lighting the torches that will carry us into tw the main effort, which will be in 2015, 16, and 17. On Veterans Day, we'll have a lot of events calling people to this mission in hometown America. Next slide, please. As we go into the major effort here, the execution phase, we will remember to re our warriors and their families, and remember especially the Gold Star families. You know, those families know, if anybody knows the price of freedom, it's our Gold Star mothers and fathers, spouses and children and brothers and sisters. We want to make sure that we reconnect all the families that, that paid a price for this war. We also want to remember the widows and the children of veterans who have passed on since the war ended. But we want to make sure this is very inclusive and very uniting. We're asking our commemorative partners in hometown America to do two events each year to thank and honor the veterans right where they live. We're, and we'll be distrib uh, distributing education materials throughout this period to our partners and asking them to help get it into the schools, but we'll also be walking, working with educational institutions. We'll continue to work throughout the program with our allies, our five allies that fought with us. And we're assisting Congress in conducting a joint meeting of Congress in early 2015 to help kick this off. Congress will call a joint meeting and tell America and tell you how much this nation appreciates your service. Military installations throughout our nation will, rec will recruit and support the communities where they're located. Each installation will conduct at least one open house annually where we invite all the veterans and their families to come to be honored, all veterans but especially the Vietnam veterans. We're asking the local, uh, we're asking local the, the installations to support not only local communities, but regional and state events with speakers, color guards, and bands, 
as they may be requested or may be available to do that. All the units that served in Vietnam that are still on active duty, we're asking them to have, during this three-year period, a homecoming where we invite the veterans and their families to come back to the unit that you served in in Vietnam and inviting all those units that supported that unit. The Guard and Reserve units will recruit and support their local communities. And think about where those, unit, those Guard and Reserve units are. They're everywhere. As we go into the phase three, and this is the last phase, 2018 to 2025, we will remain focused on thanking and honoring our warriors and especially our Gold Star families. And we will not think that, that we've done our job unless we're able to find and thank every veteran and every family member that we possibly can. We'll also continue to support commemorative partners. We'll still be doing things in hometown America. We will continue to do everything possible to support our nation's commitment to the fullest possible accounting for those still unaccounted for. As we come to the end of this, we hope that there will be very few that have not been accounted for and returned home. But we want to make sure as we come to the end that we've done it right. And if there's anything we haven't done, we've got plenty of time to do it right but especially with educational materials and the history books. We want to make sure they properly reflect the legacy of this great generation. You won all the major battles in that war. You did all your nation asked and then some. You served where duty called just as your forefathers had done in all our wars, and just as your children and your grandchildren are doing on today's battlefield. We want that legacy reported properly. And in closing, let me just give you a few lights from the Memorial Day event that took place uh, at the wall. We selected this day to announce to the nation about what was coming in this commemoration. And we also wanted to publish a, a proclamation. And I think most of you have a copy of that. Attending that event was President and Mrs. Obama, Vice President and Dr. Biden, Secretaries of Defense, who was the host, Vet Secretary of Veterans Affairs, Secretary of Interior. Uh, uh, the Secretary of State was traveling, but the Deputy Secretary of State was there. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff was there. Senator Chuck Hagel, who was a young Sergeant E-5 in the 9th Division, introduced the president, a Vietnam veteran. Uh, senior leaders from all the services, the Chiefs of Service, the secretaries were there. Tom Selleck was the master of ceremony. And we had 4,500 guests or more. The Vietnam veterans were the true VIPs for that ceremony. All the luminaries were there to help honor them. The event was open to the public, and nobody was turned away knowingly. The VSOs played a key role, and they initially started the ceremony by laying wreaths. And if you look at this, uh, this slide, you'll see the, the American Legion is in the top picture in the center. And at the closing, just before we had the flyover of all the Ventus aircraft, each of the senior leaders escorted a Gold Star family member from each service to lay a wreath in honor of a name that was on the wall. The Department of Defense was the host, but the Vietnam Veteran Memorial Fund and the National Park Service was a co-host, co and this was a great team effort to, kick the begin, uh, to begin this commemoration and to help kick it off. This was carried live on three television networks nationwide, and we captured most of the front pages of the news uh, of the major newspapers the next day talking about what we owe this generation. In this next slide, you see the presidential proclamation being read in public for the first time by the Congressional Medal of Honor recipient, First Lieutenant Brian Thacker, U.S. Army Vietnam veteran. 
And I know you have a copy of, it, of this, but let me just quote a few lines. This will be a 13-year program to honor and give thanks to a generation of proud Americans who saw our country through one of the most challenging missions we've ever faced. While no words will ever be fully worthy of their service, nor any honor truly befitting their sacrifice, let us remember that it is never too late to pay tribute to the men and women who answered the call of duty with courage and valor. Let us renew our commitment to the fullest possible accounting for those who, are, who have not returned. On this next slide, you see the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Marty Dempsey, escorting Mr. Dave Klinker, who is the brother of Captain Mary Klinker, U.S. Air Force nurse, who was killed in baby lift bringing orphans out of Vietnam at the end. And let me quote a few remarks from the chairman that day. General Dempsey talked about how much he was inspired as a young 16-year-old boy in his hometown by Captain John Graham, who he met after his first tour in Vietnam. He was his hero. Captain Graham was a reason that General Dempsey chose to follow the profession of arms and chose to go to West Point. When General Dempsey was a freshman at West Point, Captain Graham returned from his second tour of duty after being killed as an advisor to the Vietnamese Army. And this is what uh, General Dempsey said that day. And whether they served in Vietnam, or Iraq, or Afghanistan, or whether they returned home or are still waiting their homecoming, there is no difference in their courage and in their sense of duty. Next slide, you see Sarah, uh, Secretary Panetta, who is escorting Ms. Sarah Frances Shea, the 93-year-old Gold Star mother of Major Donald Shea, Jr., U.S. Air Force, who is still missing in action after 42 years. And let me uh, just quote a few remarks from, from uh, Secretary Panetta's talk that day. Many more came home from that war to a country that failed to fully acknowledge their service and their sacrifice and failed to give them the honor they justly deserve. That experience, that failure to thank those who were willing to put their lives on line for their country was burned into the soul of my generation for too many Vietnam veterans, the recognition of their bravery came too late. The Vietnam generation, my generation, is graying now. But this commemorative effort will give this country the opportunity today and in the years ahead to try to right the wrongs of the past, to remember those who served in the war and what they did for us their service and their sacrifice on behalf of us. This next slide shows what we think is the result of Memorial Day events, which helped prepare Secretary Panetta extremely well for his historic trip to Vietnam, which he departed for that trip shortly after the event at the wall. And in the spirit of improving bilateral relations in Vietnam, they opened up, while he was in country, three previously restricted areas for joint POW-MIA accounting operations. And we hope this will bring more of our unaccounted for home in the near future. On this next slide, you see President and Mrs. Obama escorting Ms. Rosemary Brown, the widow specialist for Leslie's, Leslie Sabo during the reef laying ceremony for Gold Star families. Specialist Sabo was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor in the White House only two weeks prior to this Memorial Day event. He lost his life in 1970 serving with the 101st 
Airborne Air Mobile Division, and his nomination for that award got lost for a long period of time. And let me quote a few lines from the remarks of our keynote speaker uh, that day, our Commander-in-Chief. And one of the most painful chapters in our history was Vietnam, most particularly how we treated our troops who served there. They were blamed for a war they didn't start when they should have been commended for their service, for serving their country with valor. You were sometimes blamed for the misdeeds of a few when the honorable service of the many should have been praised. You came home and sometimes were denigrated when you should have been celebrated. It was a national shame, a disgrace that should have never happened. And that's why today we resolve that it will never happen again. In closing, let me uh, thank the American Legion and the American Legion Auxiliary for all you do and for the key role that you're going to play in assisting a grateful nation and thanking and honoring our Vietnam veterans and their families during this 13-year period. On January the 4th, 2012, I was asked to come over and meet with our national commander and senior staff in Washington, D.C., and give an overview. And from that meeting, we got some very good suggestions about how to conduct this commemoration. And then on May the 9th, 2012, the American Legion passed a resolution, resolution stating, the American Legion fully supports the Department of Defense in their efforts to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War and you'll never know what a shot in the arm that was for us to have that backing so early. We need the American Legion, all the leadership. We need the American Legion Auxiliary and all that leadership. We especially need the 14,000 posts across America and around the world. We need the 2.4 million members in this nation to help recruit, organize, and lead our nation's effort in hometown America where you've been doing that as long as I can remember. And together, we can do what we should have done 50 years ago, to properly thank and honor our Vietnam veterans and their families, and especially the families who lost loved ones. In closing, let me just quote from a Vietnam veteran, a poem that he wrote, a guy named Albert Nahas. And here's what he wrote. It mattered not what politicians argued. It mattered not what history would reveal. We had no expectations to serve where duty called us, and we asked for no reward except a nation's thanks. And as I was coming to the National Commander's Dinner last night, I was given a note by one of our Legionnaires, and I'd like to, he asked me to close with this, and with your permission, I will. He'd like to take a moment this morning to remember a fallen Vietnam veteran named Jackie Clyde Denhart of Hampton, Virginia, a very good friend of the 8th District Vice Commander of the Department of Iowa. Ed Rohner. Jackie was lost exactly 43 years ago while ejecting from a Mohawk in Vietnam. And I ask that we take a moment this morning to have a moment of silence to remember Jackie and his family. And I would add to that, let's take a moment of silence this morning to remember more than 58,000 names on that wall. And especially the families had to live without their loved ones, the mothers, the fathers, the spouses, especially the children, the brothers, the sisters. Let's take a moment of silence just to remember 
all those who gave all their tomorrows. And that's a tough price to pay when you're 18 or 19 years old. God bless our Vietnam veterans. God bless all of our veterans. God bless their families. And God bless those on the battlefield today. God bless the great United States of America. Thank you very much.